God bless you tonight. Thank God for another day. We praise him for all his goodness. We thank him for his loving kindness. We, we're just uh, happy about the glory of God and happy about the blessedness that's upon our life. Uh, we are blessed tonight and we are favored of God and we should continually, continually rejoice and give him thanks for all that he's doing. Praise God, because God used to say when, uh, when I was young in the church that God is in the blessing business and he is. He has blessed us with so much and he constantly, the Bible said, loads us up daily with benefits and the blessings of the Lord make rich, the Bible says, and add no sorrow. So instead of looking around at our situations and our circumstances and the things that may be happening in our lives right now that, uh, that maybe we have no control over or we're not happy about, let's look at what God is doing. Take our minds and our hearts off those things. Say, Lord, I, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you because you love me. And I thank you for your, for your love. I thank you for giving your son for my life. I thank you, Lord God, for my health. And I thank you for my strength. And I thank you for all that you continue to do for me and my family. So we've got something. Listen to me, people, God. We got something to be thankful for. We, we got a reason to praise him, a reason to worship him. And that's not about getting gifts and getting toys and all the stuff that's out here in the world, praise God. It's thanking him for his divine favor and his divine love, which he has bestowed upon each and every one of us. We, so God's eyes up on us. The word of God tells us before we start, for, as we, before we go into our prayer in Psalms 34, and it says, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open unto their cries. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. It says the righteous cry and the Lord hear and deliver them out of all their troubles. It says the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. It says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver them him from all of them. Many might be the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is a deliverer. Father God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for being God as a deliverer. We thank you for this great salvation that you bestowed upon us through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your eyes upon us. The word of God tells us that your eyes run to and fro, to and fro, praise God, throughout the earth, throughout the whole earth, showing yourself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards you. Father, we thank you tonight for all things, Lord God. And we're going to praise you. We're going to worship you for your greatness. We're going to worship you for your power, for your glory, for your might. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We just ask right now as we come before your presence, Lord, we ask you to give us a proceeding word out of your mouth, Lord God. A word that we, that we can walk and live by that will strengthen us, Lord God. Oh, Lord, that we can continue to run the race and fight the fight in these last days, these last times, this last hour, Lord God. Strengthen your people with your spiritual might, your spiritual power, Lord God. Touch every heart and every mind, Lord. Strengthen the weak, Lord God. Strengthen the hands of the weak, Lord God. Strengthen their hearts, Father God, that they will continue to look unto you, that they will not uh, give up hope, that they not Stop running for you, Lord God. Oh, strengthen their legs, Lord God. Father, all things in your hands, Lord. Father, as we said tonight, let us look unto you, for you look upon us, your eyes upon us, your eyes upon the righteous. Oh, Father God, and you're able, you're able, you have the power, you have the might to deliver us from every affliction. Praise God, from every affliction, from every problem, Lord God. And the Bible said that you make, even in the midst of it, you make a way for us, to, for us to escape. That means that we could be in the midst of a circumstance. We could be in the midst of a situation. And your peace and your joy is there keeping us, keeping our minds. Even with your Apostle Paul, your man of God, being in prison, praise God, and going through all types of things, Lord. He said, I can do all things through Christ. Father, we can do all things through you tonight. 
We can do all things to, to you tonight because our strength cometh from you, Lord. Our help cometh from you. We just ask that you touch us, that we can go forth as people of God. Give us the boldness, the courage to go forth and continue to witness for you, to tell men about your goodness, to look for an opportunity every day to show people and tell people about your love, tell people about your mercy, tell people about your glory. Lord, we, we pray right now for opportunities. Open up doors for us, Lord God, as your people. Open up doors that we can go in and we can go in and proclaim your name, Lord. But we're living in a world that's dark. I live in a world, a world that's growing, growing darker, Lord God, by the moment. Father, we pray right now that you keep our hearts and minds right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We praise God tonight. Praise the Lord for this God whose eyes upon us, whose watches over us, those are the righteous, or the word righteous means those are the right standings. We're in right standing with God. Praise God. And God has obligated himself. He's obligated himself to take care of us. He's obligated himself to meet our needs. Praise God. And we've got to praise him for that. We got to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I give you the glory. That's why we got to come before him. Praise God with praise and worship and giving him the glory. Look, when, when David uh, was talking about in Psalms uh, 100, praise the Lord. And he talked about coming before the presence of God, which is and he says, how we should come before him? Psalms 100, right? We're just reading this for encouragement. He says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Somebody might say, well, I don't nothing to be happy about. Nothing to be, I'm just, I'm just going through and I'm just dealing with this and all this is happening to me. Praise God. Look, we got to make a joyful noise unto, unto the Lord. A noise of joy, a noise of praise, a noise of worship. You cannot allow the enemy to take away your worship. Don't give up your peace. Don't give up your joy. Don't give up the, your hope, your faith, the things that, that God said we have to walk in and live in. Listen, the enemy always wants to take care of this, to take away the things, praise God, that will strengthen you. The things that will cause you to walk and be stronger in him, praise God. That, that's strong in God. He wants to take away all those things. But you got to understand, I refuse. I refuse to give over my mind, to give my will over to him. So he says, serve the Lord. How? With gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless, the, bless his name. For the Lord is what? He said, the Lord is good. He is what? He is good. I don't care how you feel tonight, in your body, in your mind. The Lord, listen to me, the Lord is good. And you got to keep saying that the Lord is good. I thank God because his Lord, the Lord is good. And listen to this, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth through all generation. The Lord is what? He's everlasting and his truth, his truth endureth all generation, not some, but all generation, his truth. So the thing that God has said to us, the word that he has declared unto us stands. Listen to me, it stands fast. And no matter how, they, how this may look and that may look, you can stand on what says the Lord. What did he tell us about faith? In Hebrews 11 and 6, he that cometh to God must believe what? That God is. That God is what? That he's a rewarder of those that what? Diligently, diligently, with earnest effort, with their heart, with all their heart, with all their mind, they're doing what? They're seeking God. They're seeking God. They're seeking the Lord. They're going to seek him. Not for the stuff. Not for... Uh, uh, just for the, the benefits, but they're seeking him because they love him and they want more of him in their life. So we're not going to allow the enemy to come in and take away the joy and the peace that God has given us because we begin to worry about uh, things around us. 
That's why we got to give give an earnest heed to the things which you have heard. We can't let this thing slip away. Because listen to me, the enemy is an oppressor. He's an oppressor. You know what an oppressor is? An oppressor is someone that wants to put burdens upon you. He's cruel. He's unjust. He's cruel. He's unjust. He puts restraints upon you. He puts burdensome and harsh exercise of authority. He has, he's, he put burdens upon you. He's harsh with his authority. He wants to oppress you. He wants to put heaviness on your mind. Praise God. Mess you up. You can't sleep at night. The weight of things of thinking and all types of things come. Listen, Jesus said, my peace, my peace, I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Mine, not nobody else's. Not the peace that the world gives. You know why? Because the world can give things and take it away. He said, I'm not going to give you that, man. You also got to think about the world's peace. The world's peace is what? It's temporal. It's temporal. The things of the world are temporal, but the things of God are everlasting to everlasting. And that's why you want to build yourself upon, upon this sure faith. That's why we see uh, Jude saying we, we got to contend. We got to earnestly contend for the faith. Is that right? Because the enemy wants to depress. The Bible says in Acts 10 and 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he said he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed. Oppressed of what? Of the devil. For God was with him. See, I just said the devil was what? He was an oppressor. He, he wants to put burden you. He wants to burden you. He wants to exercise his power. He wants to exercise his authority over your life. He wants to put heaviness upon you. Heavy feelings, heaviness in mind. So heavy that you that you woke all night thinking about this and thinking about that. But the, the Lord, but the Bible tells us here that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. The Lord, listen, the Lord is with you. And that same Jesus that was doing all that work then and was healing, he's still doing it today. He's still healing the mind. He's still healing the heart. Listen, when we came out of the world, listen, we needed healing. You know why? Because we were sin sick. We were sin sick. It took the Lord. It takes the Lord to heal you. You can't go to the doctor and get a prescription for this. That's why people uh, go and get prescriptions for different things, depression and things of this nature. And if they stop taking it, it comes right back. It comes right back. Things that's wrong with things mentally, mental. They have to keep taking these things so they can so they can keep themselves together. See, Jesus is the only one that's a, that can heal you divinely. God heals you divinely. We were sin sick. We needed divine healing. Divine healing. We've been healed by the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that's healed us. And as it healed us, and you know what it's done? Not only healed us, it has made us whole. Then now we can walk and we can live in him. When, when Legion ran up on Jesus, when he ran up on Jesus, and he, he asked Jesus, and he asked Jesus, uh, he stood before Jesus, and Jesus said, who are you? He said, we're Legion, we are many. But in the long, in the, in the short story, you know, Jesus cast the devils out of him, didn't he? Cast the demons out. And then he went into town, and, and, and Legion was with him, and he was clothed and in his right mind. He was clothed because he was naked. But he was clothed now. And he was in his right mind. Spiritually, look what God does. He's clothed you with his goodness. He clothes you with his joy. He clothes you with his peace. He clothes you with his blessings. He gives you everything that you need in order for you to live this life. In order for you to live in this life. Because see, one thing I want you to understand uh, about the pressure of the enemy, that he wants to stop you, move you out of the position that God has called you to walk and to live in. See, we, we must position ourselves under, under divine authority. We got to position ourselves under divine authority. God doesn't force himself on us, does he? 
We have to have a mindset, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm going to submit myself to you. Remember, I, I just read Psalms. He says, he near to those of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Those are ones that, that are willing to submit themselves to what? To, to divine authority. I'm, you, you, I'm going to come for you. I'm going to come before you. I've been talking a lot about the heart these last few months. Praise God. And I'm, and I'm a person that, that basically talk about the heart a, a lot because you know why? Because if the heart ain't right, it don't matter about everything else. It doesn't. Because the heart is the thing that's deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. And this is the thing that the enemy will, uh, always wants to work through. And this is the thing also that God wants to work in. He wants our hearts to be right toward him. Our minds to be right toward him. Praise God that that we can walk and we can live like he wants to live because we can quote scriptures. We can say a whole lot of things. But God must be sanctified in our heart. Remember we read scripture in 1 Peter 3 and 15. And it says, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts. Sanctify what? God in your hearts. Set him apart. You're set apart for God. He's got to be sanctified in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you, a reason of the hope that is in you. He says with meekness and fear. See, he said, you gotta, you gotta do what? Sanctify God, sanctify the Lord in your heart. Then you can walk and live in purpose. Look at this. There's no way for you to walk and live in purpose without God being sanctified in your heart. He said, sanctify the Lord in your, in your heart and be ready because sanctifying God in your heart gets you ready. It prepares you. It, said, it prepares you to you be ready always because God is sanctified in my heart. I'm always ready to give, give an answer to every man. Might not know every scripture, might not might fumble in, in, in all kinds of things with scriptures, but because you know his love, you can speak on his love. You can say, man, I don't know all that, but let me tell you something. This God, this Jesus, the things that he's done for me, I mean, I don't know all the words, but he took me, he, he took the, you can tell him, he took the drugs out of my life. He took the alcohol out of my life. He took this out of my life. He took that out of my life. He saved me and healed me and, and delivered me from the oppressor. From the oppressor. So that's why there's this need for this, for this heart, this mind being right. And that's what I've been talking about having this heating heart, a heating heart. And it's important, praise God, that, that, you, that you apply your mind and your heart to what thus says the Lord. I'm going to get my mind and get my heart. And when we look at this again in uh, Hebrews 2, oh, excuse me, uh, yes, yeah, Hebrews 2 and 1, and, and, um, and it says to us, therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed. And remember, I told you that word earnest means sincere, honest. Hard felt, firm. We ought to give the most earnest heed, sincere. We should, we've got to walk in sincerity. It should come from our hearts. We got to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have what heard. This word. At least at any time we should have let them slip. And we said that was it, it was like a nautical term that a boat tied into a dock. And comes loose from his mooring and begins to drift. The waves begin to take it further and further. Out, the current begins to take it further and further out into the sea. That's what happened. That's what happened when we're not connected like we need to be. We're not connected to God like we should. We got to be, that, that good connection is important, isn't it? We deal with connection. You, you, wanna, you can't get on the internet without what? Connection. You got the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi password, things of this nature. You want to be connected, so you can so you can see this, and you can see that you can go on the internet, you can do whatever you need to do. And it tell it's important we have this good connection, because if we don't have this, and we drift. And I said we'll drift away from the harbor. I said before the word tells that the, uh, it, it defines us that that harbor is Jesus. Jesus that is this true harbor. Jesus is the true anchor. He keeps us in place. It, but it, listen to me, it only happens when you position yourself under his authority. 
When you position yourself under the authority of God, when you humble yourself, the Bible tells us to do it. Humble ourselves under the what mighty hand of God. When we humble ourselves under God's mighty hand, look what he tells us in 1 Peter, 1 Peter 5. He says, 5 and 6, he says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of who? Of God. Humble yourself under, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in what? In due time. That means at a point in time. Just to let you know, that's, that don't mean you, it's letting us know we don't exalt ourselves. That due time means that he, this, this point in time, the season that he feels it's time and it's fit for you to go forth. Sometimes we run out and do things too quick. Some people may, some people may be called to, to minister, to go out and start a church and do certain things, but they run out too quick. It's something that I've seen uh, as I've gotten older, with, even with young men, uh, they feel an urge, an urgency in, in their spirit. And, 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 and it could be from God. But let me tell you something, when God's going to do something, it's going to be according to his timing and his purpose. We're ready quick to tell the pastor, I got to go, I, I got to go, I got to go. And we run out there, we, we make our move too soon because God didn't say go now. It can be burning, but you've got to, you got to wait. The Bible tells us that. It's in Romans 12. It talks about a man waiting on his calling. You wait patiently. For God to do it, he needs to do it you. Because there's still some things in your life that God's got to finish, that God's got to work on, that God's got to prepare your mind and your heart for the task that's ahead. Because it, listen to me, it's not just about preaching. This is, this is about ministry. It's about being able to continue to minister while you're being threatened, while you're being persecuted, you learn to preach while bleeding. You got, to, you got to be able to do all this and then not get up and talk about the people that's doing something to you. Paul didn't talk about Alexander Copper Smith. He said he did me much harm, but God will take care of it. Said, Let me move on. Let me move on because it'll take you away from your position of encouraging the people of God. So he said, humble yourself. Look what he said. Casting all your care. I heard this up. A thousand times that way, casting all your cares upon him. Why? Because his eyes are upon the righteous. Cast your cares upon him. Cast your what? Your cares upon him. Stay connected to God. Go to God and say, Lord, you see my heart. You see my mind. You know. You know what I need. God knows what you need. God knows what I need. We, none of us got it all. None of us. We don't have it all. Paul said, I have not obtained. I'm still running. I'm still reaching. I'm still pressing for the mark, for the high calling. If we are believers tonight, we need to keep running. We need to keep pressing. Pressing means we're fighting through. We're pushing through. We're going to do whatever necessary. This brother was in prison. Can you imagine the, the, the man of God in prison and and He's dealing with situations just being locked down in, in a hole, a hole of mud and dirt. It, you you in a hole and you're in a prison, locked between guards. But in your mind, you're saying, my God is able to keep that which I commit. He's able to keep what I, that thing that I'm committing to him. The word of God was a thing that was keeping him, the word of God that was in his heart. Because as he was, as he was thinking and as he was dealing with the situation, he was writing it. He wasn't reading this, he was writing it. It was in his heart, I'm a God, I keep to what you commit. I'm able to do all things through Christ that strengthened me. My God is my supply of all my needs. All this was in his heart. Why? Because he was he, he he had given himself, he had positioned himself under divine authority. Under divine authority. And it wasn't just in his mind, it was in his heart. That's why you got to give yourself over to God. You got to continue to apply your heart. Apply your mind. Proverbs 23 and 12, I'll read this again. It says, apply thy heart to instruction in thy ear to, to words of knowledge. 
apply the heart to what instruction, to true instruction, to righteous instruction. Feed your spirit, feed your faith, not your fears, not your doubt. Feed your spirit, feed your faith. How do I feed my faith? I feed my faith with the word of God. I feed my faith by believing and standing on what God has said and holding fast to it. I'm doing what's necessary to get this in me. I mean, when I was a little boy, they had a, a, a bread I'll call Wonder Bread. And they used to have, have a commercial, a, a little boy would eat it and, and, and he would have big old muscles, you know, after he ate Wonder Bread. And I, I remember one that had it, I wanted this Wonder Bread. My mother sent me to the store to get some. I don't remember what it was, but I ended up buying Wonder Bread. I just wanted bread so bad. I, I bought food what she wanted, and I bought some Wonder Bread. She said, "What, what, what, what you doing?" You know, she called me Ricky. Ricky, what, what happened? I said, "Mama, I just wanted this bread," and I, I almost ate the whole loaf in one day because I wanted to get that that power. I wanted to get that strength. I wanted to look like him. Now listen to me. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. I think I was only in the second grade, something like that. It didn't happen. I went outside. I ran as hard as I could, and I just knew it was the Wonder Bread. It wasn't. It wasn't the Wonder Bread. It was in my mind thinking that I could do this and thinking that the bread could do this. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't have to look at a commercial. I don't have to think on this. I don't have to feel like it's happening. When God is in your heart and in your spirit, his divine power works in you. It works in you. It moves in your life. You begin to stand and withstand in this time, in this, in this, in this uh, dispensation of time. You begin to stand, but you got to continue to apply this thing to your heart. You got to continue to walk in it. You got to keep doing what God says. This is, you got to keep eating. Matthew 4 and 4 says what? Man should not, Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but out of every word to proceed out of the mouth of God. The same thing the man of God said in, in Deuteronomy 8, 1 and 3, that man should not live by bread alone, but out of every word to proceed out of the mouth of God. It had been said before. God has said it before. And he said it again. He said it in the old, he said it in the new. Because this is something that, that you can't, that, that you just can't dissolve and move away from. Man's got to keep eating this. Man's got man's to want this. God wanted us to have it so bad that he made it flesh and let it dwell among us. Look what it says. We got to keep applying Proverbs 23 and 12. Got to keep applying this. We can't be effective if we're not. God wants us to be effective. Hmm? He wants us to be effective. Not just active, but effective. A lot of folks are active, but they're not effective. They're doing a whole lot of stuff. Got a whole lot of thing going on in the church. My church doing this, my church doing that. But is it effective? Are we just entertaining people? We got to be, we got to have a mind. Say, Lord, I want to be effective in my work. Even if I'm working with one or two people, I want to be effective in, in touching their lives. I want to be effective in, help, effective in helping somebody. Find you. Know you. It, it takes connection, my friends. Hmm? We got to do this with reverence. We got to do it with trembling. We got we to gotta trust in what God says. The Bible says in Philippians, that God wants to work in you. He wants to work in you to do his will, his good pleasure, isn't that right? And he will give you the power. I love that. He said he will give you the power and the strength to do his will. Uh-huh. God will give it to you. He'll give you the power. He'll give you the strength to do what he wants, to do what needs to be done in your life. He gave Paul the power. He gave the, the, the apostles the power. He gave his prophets the power to do his will. That's, look at Philippians 2 and 12. 2 and 12, I'm gonna read this and close. He said, wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is who? God. It is who, say this with me, it is who? God. 
God, say his name is God, which was worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If you, God knows if you're going to do his will and do his good pleasure, that, that he's the one that's going to empower you to do it. But it has to be a mindset and a desire for him to want to do it. He's not going to force himself upon you. No, he's not. He said, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and do of his good pleasure. It's God working in you. God's working in you. What do I mean? God's energizing you. He's energizing you to be effective. And effective to do his will. He's creating in you the power and the desire to go forth in purpose. God creates in you the, the power and desire to go forth in purpose. That's God. Keep giving heed. Keep giving heed. Somebody come to you and they hurt me. Some give heed. Let's give heed to what God has said. Let's give earnest heed to what God has said. I don't know no other answer. Somebody, people, somebody came to me one time and they asked me for about something, situation he was having. And I said, well, let's pray. Let's go talk to God. He said, I knew you were going to say that. I'm looking like, what did you expect me to say? That's the only way, place I know to turn. It's to him. You know why? Because the Bible has said to me that he is the author and he is the finisher. Author and the finisher of my faith. And it tells me there in Hebrews to look unto him, to stay focused on him, get my eyes on him. Get, listen, get your mind on him. Get your heart on him. I said before, feed your faith. Feed your spirit. Feed it through what? Through the word of God. Just like folks say, I like good food. I want good eating. I want to eat something good. Eat something good. You know, that's what you got to have a mind. Say, I desire something better than this. I want something better than what the world is given. I want something better than what I'm hearing on TV and watching this and that. I need something better so I can live and walk like God said. All oh, the Lord is good tonight. And I praise him for all that he is. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship him together. Let's praise him together as people of God. Let's give him the glory. Encourage somebody. Encourage somebody. You know, encouraging people will encourage you. Hallelujah. I just thank God today. Continue to keep staying in position. Stay in position under divine authority. Stay in that position of the authority of God. Hallelujah. His eyes are upon us tonight. Let us pray. Father God, we bless your name. We thank you tonight for you are so wonderful. And Lord, we're excited about living for you. Yes, we are. Oh, Father, we thank you for you take care of us. You watch over us. You provide for us. You provide for our children. Hallelujah. You watch over those that we have prayed for. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your love. Oh, Father, continue to show us your will. Let the vision be alive in us that we can go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. And we give you the glory and the praise. God bless you, people of God. God bless you. I love you tonight. Keep praying for it. Keep praying for the body. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.